Hi everyone, Sid here back at home and it's about that time. I'm going to share with you a planning system that I've been using for almost exactly six months now. Uh, you've probably already heard of it. Bullet journals! Now before I get into this video, I'm assuming that many of you, this is the first video on this channel that you've seen, so I just want to manage some expectations. First of all, this is not a flip through. You're not going to see any top down view of my bullet journal. Uh, this video rests on the assumption that you already know what a bullet journal is. Uh, if you don't, I'm going to leave some relevant links below to some videos that could do a better job than I could of explaining what a bullet journal is, including the original Ryder Carroll video and uh, a bunch of other goodies. Second of all, George Carlin's Seven Dirty Words are fair game on this channel. I don't go out of my way to say them, but if my mind goes there, then fuck it. Third of all, there's a pet peeve of mine that I have with the bullet journaling community that I'm going to get off my chest. And when I get to that point, I'm giving myself full license to lose it. Frankly, I'm getting a little worked up just thinking about it. But to keep all that in perspective though, if what I'm going to cover later is my biggest problem with the bullet journal community, and it is, then I don't have a problem with the bullet journal community. And I don't, you guys are awesome. Now let's get into it. Bullet journaling is a system that I stumbled upon by pure coincidence. And to add to that coincidence, I discovered this on December 31st, 2016, as I was getting ready to go to a New Year's Eve party. And I figured the timing was good. I might as well just get into it because writing things on pen and paper by hand is very important to me. There's a lot of evidence that suggests that it's good for your brain and as fun as organizing things electronically is concerned, you know, syncing, alarms, and shit like that, organizing things with pen and paper is really important to me. In fact, there's a saying that I, that I say all the time is, if it's important, I'll plan it digitally. If it's really important, I'll plan it with pen and paper. So basically, um, goals and big things like that, I'll always do it by pen and paper. And tasks like doctor's appointments and uh, not forgetting to take my car to the mechanic and shit like that, that's for my cell phone. So even though, as I said earlier, I'm assuming that you know what a bullet journal is, I will give a quick definition anyway. A bullet journal is basically a way to organize your notebook and it's part journal, part planner, part notebook. And that's it. The main thing that I love about bullet journaling is that it is ridiculously flexible. There's literally no wrong way to do it. And that could be why some of you haven't done it yet, even though you know what it is. A bunch of bullet journaling videos, on YouTube especially, are done by a bunch of artsy chicks who are into scrapbooking and doodling and dedicating an entire page to practicing your cursive. Uh, by the way, when I was in elementary school, I learned cursive. So what you guys call cursive, I just called handwriting. And this can be intimidating to someone because no matter how often these women tell you that you don't need to make it as complicated as they are, it could just seem like a lot of work, which is why I'm going to tell you how I've been doing it for the last six months. Another thing that I love about bullet journaling is how easy it is to intermingle notes with tasks and events and with the philosophy of the bullet journal it's really about you flip to the next available page and you use it for whatever it is that you need done at that moment so before we get into the software side of bullet journaling let's start with hardware notebooks this is another one of these things that's said over and over again throughout uh, the bullet journaling community but you really don't need to spend a lot on some fancy ass notebook as a matter of fact this was my first notebook that i was using it is a spiral hillroy notebook that i had used years ago and was decomposing and on january 1st of this year i figured you know I might as well use that. And I made it pretty far into this notebook. Uh, I made it to April, as you can see, there's barely anything left in here. And the only reason I didn't write it into the ground is because it started falling apart, really. Look at that, I can't be carrying this around, it's gonna die on me. The reason I don't still use such spiral notebooks is because I need my quad paper. I've been a fan of quad paper for as long as I can remember. And honestly, if Hilroy made a spiral notebook that is this size, that has this number of pages on it, roughly, and was quad paper, I'd be all over that shit. My current notebook is this moleskin quad paper notebook, and when I've done with that, I will move on to the superior Leuchtturm 1917 dot grid. And the Leuchtturm 1917 really is the superior notebook. It has more, 
bigger, higher quality pages than the Moleskin. They're numbered in advance and if you bought yours recently, you have an extra bookmark. The evidence is overwhelming and there's no way to argue against it without appealing to emotion. I don't know, using a Moleskin notebook just gives me this special feeling in my heart. More power to you. Now here's the issue though. These things cost about 25 bucks a pop. I bought them because they're popular and I wanted to experience them firsthand to see what they were like. And frankly, I'm enjoying the Moleskin, and I can't wait to hit that Loic term with the full experience of going through the Moleskin notebook. But I can't afford to spend 25 bucks on a notebook that's only gonna last me three months. That's $100 a year. I like bullet journaling, but not that much. A compromise that I've discovered are composition notebooks. They cost under 10 bucks, you have almost 200 pages of quad paper. But the future is looking bright because so far, Bujo Rock 2 here is on track towards lasting me about five or six months. And I'm glad because composition notebooks are significantly bigger than the Moleskin or Loic term. It's almost as big as a standard letter size notebook. Look at that. Moving on to the next piece of hardware. Pens! I gotta say, I'm glad I'm not recording this in January or February. Because back then I would have said there's no way I'm using more than one pen in my notebook. But since then, I've discovered a YouTube channel called Verbal to Visual, and I've basically gone into sketch noting. So now I use the three color system that he proposes. Blue for text, black for illustrations, red for support. Or use whatever colors you want. Or just one. Honestly, I totally get it. I find three colors complicated, but I like the result. And it mainly only comes into play when I'm creating a new spread anyway. So now let's go to the software side. I'd like to start with a word on keys. I'm strongly against the idea of putting a key in your bullet journal. This was a process I came through in three steps. I didn't know that there was such a thing as a key in a bullet journal until like January 2nd or 3rd, so I didn't have one at first. And when I saw it, I was like, oh cool, I could do that! So I quickly added one to my first bullet journal. And after a couple days, I came to the realization, if you need a key to remind you what a symbol means, you don't use that symbol often enough, and you could probably do without it. Keep it simple, stupid! My first reflex is to say don't waste your time with the standard default future log that is explained in the standard bullet journal. You might end up using it anyway, a lot of people do. However, before wasting precious pages on that, I would suggest you look into the Calendex method or the Alistair method. Those are by far the two most popular ways to implement the future log in a bullet journal. I use a hybrid approach. My plan is every quarter I'm going to put the next three months in a Calendex and everything after that I'm going to go Alistair. Ultimately do what works for you. As I said at the beginning, there's no wrong way to do it, but there's a reason why Calendex and Alistair are so popular. Habit trackers! A lot of people love habit trackers in their bullet journals. I know I do. And a lot of people also find it too complicated. So I just want to give a quick word on what would make a good habit to track in a habit tracker. There are basically two kinds of things you want to put in there. First of all, a habit that you want to build or maintain. And second of all, the kind of thing that you quickly want an answer to, when was the last time that I did this? So if you're on the fence, I would say take a quick inventory of such habits and if there are enough of those things, then go ahead and do a habit tracker. I think they're great. But I could also see how someone would find it too complicated and I can also see how uh, someone would get discouraged by having a line for a habit that they want to build and seeing all those days go by without an X in there. I know that since January I've removed some habits like that from my tracker. Weekly spreads! I am so lucky that on January 1st, the very first weekly spread that I saw, I will put a link below, it was a one-page weekly spread. And that was a stroke of luck because almost every weekly spread that you will find on YouTube is a two-page spread. And if I hadn't stumbled on this so quickly, I probably wouldn't have a weekly spread in my journal. I'm not doing two pages every week. Ain't nobody got time for that! So this is what it looks like. As you can see, you have your tasks, your events, and the only difference is this free-for-all section at the bottom here, which for me usually ends up getting filled with um, shit that I want to get done this week, but not on a specific day. Uh, the main difference is the link, uh, the video that I linked below, uh, she extends the two median lines all the way down. I prefer to just have it as a good, nice and proper free-for-all section. As great as the bullet journaling community is, there's one thing that drives me nuts. If only there was a word in the English language that was used to describe a series of words that are probably united by a theme and may or may not be highlighted by bullet points. I know! 
collections. It's a fucking list. There is zero added value in using this word to describe something that is an age-old concept that already has an age-old word. I'm almost ready to go, sweetie. I just need to review my shopping collection. What's a shopping collection? Oh, it's a list. <clears throat> I've written down all the things that I want to buy in a page in my bullet journal. Oh, so you mean a list. I don't know why I just played her as a valley girl. Calling your list collections doesn't really do anything, besides causing confusion when you talk about them to non-bullet journalers. You might not even use that term when you talk to non-bullet journalers, which is a clue. Seriously, y'all need to stop. Or not, whatever. Again, if this is my biggest problem with the bullet journaling community, then I have no problem with the bullet journal community. But I roll my eyes every time I hear that fucking word. <sighs> I'm glad that's over with. So before I let you go, I just want to mention some channels that I found useful. Links below. You gotta start with Boho Berry. She's like a godfather of bullet journaling on YouTube. Godmother. God parental person? She's great, but she's definitely one of those artsy chicks I mentioned at the beginning. I watched her February series where she basically filmed herself setting up her day every day, and I counted at least 10 pen changes at some points. But I do appreciate her taking the time to mention that she only goes into that detail when she has time. The next are no particular order. Verbal to visual, that's not a bullet journaling resource per se, but it is a note taking resource. It got me into sketch noting. I'm totally a noob, but you know, it's worth it. I like it. Bujo Boosted. Hi Ricardo! I've taken a lot of information from Bujo Boosted, and I think it's just a great resource. I'm a big fan of the Checker Life Check spread. As a matter of fact, despite having thought of a way of doing the Checker Life Check spread without a bunch of brush pens, I still ended up buying some brush pens. This is 100% of the brush pens that I own. I don't even use the purple one here. I figured I'd do it once a week. It's from home. It's not like I have to lug a bunch of brush pens around. But if you want to do that spread and you're more stubborn than I was, the way to do it without any colors is double X, X, horizontal line, check mark, double check mark. Between the steps. I can't quite put my finger on why I love her channel so much, but I must bow to the evidence of my own behavior. I often find myself going back to that channel for a bunch of different reasons. I fucking love her accent, but that's not an argument. It's really about the content that's there. I invite you to check it out and decide for yourself. And that's a wrap! Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. If you're new to this channel, I invite you to check out some of my other videos to decide if this is the kind of channel that you want to subscribe to. If you do, hit the bell to get notifications. This is probably going to be my only bullet journaling video unless you leave comments below asking for more shit, asking for questions and things like that. You'll find links to my social media down below. Like and share. Thank you once again for having watched all of this and I'll see you soon.